Hello and welcome to week 21 of this 2022-2023 school year. Hello, if you're new to my channel, my name is Marielle Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. I'm actually coming to you in the morning for a change because I usually just come and check in with you at the end of the day. But today is a teacher planning day, so I wanted to give you a little rundown of what I'm planning to do today and how I'm kind of organizing my day using Google Keep. So let me show you. And so here is my Google Keep setup. These are my pinned boards or my, yeah, my pinned notes, I should say. And at the bottom I have like the previous week. So these are my lesson plans from last week. I just, you know, have an image because I create my lesson plans on PowerPoint. So I save it as an image and I add it to my notes and I just put what lesson plans they are the week of. And these are all the activities that we had planned for the week. I didn't check them off, but there they are. I updated my overall to-do list right here, and I do have the school calendar here for my reference so that I can kind of see when the days off are and, you know, where we are. So right now, we are right now in January 23rd. Tomorrow's the start of the third grading period, and then we don't have another day off until President's Day in February. And then in March, we have our spring break, et cetera. So the last day of school, of course, is in June since we start in mid-August. And then I have this, this for this week. So I haven't finalized my lesson plans yet. So this is an old image of a lesson plan, but I will update that and go ahead and put in all of these different activities for the week. And as you can see, I color code each day and that's how I color code each of my notes here. And these are my planning day to do's. So these are the six things that I hope to accomplish today. And if I don't get through it, at least I'll make some progress towards some of them. The Google Keep headers that I use for my Google Keep notes, I create on a PowerPoint. Maybe on another day, I can show you how I do that. And I save them as images and I just import them into my Google Keep Notes, and that's how I organize that. So without further ado, let me go ahead and get started with lesson planning, and then I will check in with you throughout the day as I complete my different tasks. All right, everyone, so I'm coming to you a couple hours later. It is, I can't even look at that clock because that's not the right time. It is 1.50 p.m. I haven't even eaten my lunch. My lunch came here around 11 a.m., and I'm like, no, let me finish this one thing. And then it's like, let me finish this other thing. So I am done with half of my to-do list. So let me show you what I have done so far. So here's my planning to-dos. And over here, you can see crossed out. I already planned for this week. I planned for next week. And I got my home learning assignments. I didn't make the copies yet, but I scratched it off because I put it together. So it's just a matter of stopping by the copy room so I can finish it up. I'm going to eat lunch and then I'm going to see how much I can get accomplished from this escape room. This week is literacy week. So on Wednesday, we're going to have students come with their parents to school at night from 530 to 730. And we're going to do different activities to engage them in reading. So for my activity, I'm going to do a reading escape room. And this is all like our literacy night is based on like ocean theme. So I got this passage from Jen Jones at Hello Literacy on TPT. I'll link it down below because it comes with different types of passages and her passages are differentiated based on Lexile levels. So, so this is the passage that I selected, Sea Glass Recycled Beauty. I'm going to see if I can get some sea glass pebbles to give away to the students that come that night. I'm probably going to have two sessions. So this is the passage. I am going to print it out in color. Probably, you know... I was going to think about laminating it, but I do want them to maybe mark it if they need to, or maybe laminate it and have them use an expo marker so that they can mark it. And then I'm going to create a escape room. I'm mostly trying to see if I can just create two locks because I only have 20 minutes, so I don't want it to be too long. So they'll have different activities to do based on that. And it's low tech, so I'm not going to use a computer. So the activity is going to be in an envelope. They're going to open it up, solve the puzzle, and then move on to the next envelope once they're done with that. 
One envelope is going to go over cause and effect, which is the text structure we're currently working on. And this passage is very good with cause and effect is one of the passages to teach that from Jen Jones resource. So that's what I'm going to plan to do. But for now, let me show you the other things that I accomplished this morning. These are my lesson plans for this week. And I also planned for next week. So that is also good to go and ready for me for next week. I also created this little booklet for essay writing. I have been thinking about doing something like this for a while. Let me just show you because this is how I kind of planned it out some time ago. So that's like the cover and on the inside will be the bucket so they can sort it. So in the front is analyze it, sort it is in the middle and then on the back is write it. So this is the final version of that all typed up and created. So they're going to analyze the prompt that we're working on. They're going to find the APT and they're going to remember to circle the essay keyword, underline the topic and ask if it's a one part or two part prompt. And then on the inside, here are the buckets. This one is for paragraph one. This one is for paragraph two. They're going to sort the evidence into two buckets, give it a title for the bucket that will be their reason or idea. And this is where their evidence is sorted. And then they're going to use that to create a topic sentence for this whole bucket, which will help them on the back to write it. So this is body paragraph one, and I'm reminding them about tree, transition, reason or idea, evidence and elaboration, and body paragraph two. So I'm glad that I had this done and I also created a notes catcher so that as they read each source, it can take notes on evidence that supports that particular writing prompt. And then the final essay will of course go into one of these sheets that we have used in the past. So here's for the introduction, here's body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and the conclusion. For their homework, I added this sheet. They're going to be reading this week about are pesticides helpful or harmful because we're working with argumentative text. So they will read this passage and complete the questions in the back. But to help them understand this a little bit further, I want them to complete a T-chart on how pesticides are helpful and how they're harmful. And then on the back, I want them to identify the author's claim or opinion and find three relevant details to support it from that passage. So that is their homework for this week. And I have three versions of this passage since I have three differentiated groups of students. And then this is the homework for next week. They're similarly, they're going to be reading about protecting the environment. We're going to move to narrative nonfiction next week. So they're going to read about the EPA. And of course, they also have questions in the back. And I have three different differentiated passages. This comes from our wonder series. And then I have the annotations. So as they're reading, they're going to complete these annotations and then they're going to find three cause and effect relationships. So that's what I was working on for the bulk of the day, but now I'm hungry. I did order my lunch earlier and it arrived earlier than usual. And I'm sure now it's cold because my room has been freezing, but I'm not complaining because I'd rather it be this way than to be a sauna like it was last week and the previous week. But I did order from Panera. I got a Baja style warm bowl and already has been sitting here so long the avocado is already turning. And chicken noodle soup, extra green sauce to go with this because I love that, and an apple. So let me go ahead, eat, and see what else I can accomplish before they kick me out of the building. All right, friends, the principal came on about 30 minutes ago and let us know that we could leave, but I wanted to work a little bit more. It's about 3.15 or so, but I'm gonna call it a day. Actually, it's almost 3.30. I'm gonna call it a day because the building's gonna close at four, so she wanted us to be out long before then. I started making progress on the reading escape room for Wednesday. I'm going to have to wrap it up tomorrow and try to come up with one more activity for them to do. I did create like a matching activity for vocabulary. And then the next activity, which will be locked to, will be for the cause and effect relationship. So I'm trying to figure out an easy way to do that. So 
let's see but this is what I started to work on. So again, this is the passage and I started making my notes. So vocabulary words that I may want it to touch upon. I found a simile. I also found a dialogue and some of the text features like the title, the photo and a caption. But these are the cause and effect relationships that I wanted to focus on from the passage. And I also did make some other notes. This is our spade reading activity and what I wanted to do for my locks. I put matching here, but I'm not sure I wanna to do two matching activities. I wanna, you know, vary it, make the two activities different. So this is what I created for lock one. So they'll have this sheet. I'll print it out on color paper. And as you can see in the sheet, there are different definitions. Then I have this sheet that will have all these words cut out so that they don't really see the number. But once they put the words on the correct definitions, they will be able to see the number to unlock the first lock. So that is the first activity. So now is on to brainstorm and think for other ways I can incorporate other fun escape room type activities for this um, literacy night. So we'll see what happens. But I'm going to close everything out now and go home. So I will see you tomorrow for a regular school day. Hello, it's the end of the day on Tuesday. What a long day it feels like, but I just finished my bus dismissal duty and I wanted to give you a rundown of what we did today. So we went ahead and introduced the new unit for Wonders, Unit 3, Week 5. We're a week behind on does advancements in science, are they helpful or harmful? So with that, I had them watch the video that introduces the concept. We read the study blast and I went ahead and created a T-chart on the board with the helpful or harmful in either side since that is similar to the homework they're gonna have for this week. So I added on the helpful side information we got from the video and from the study blast. Let me show you that on the board. It's a little bit messy, but this is real life. So here are the effects and pardon my board. I'm using these new markers and they leave really terrible residue. So I gotta clean it up real well, but helpful. So advances in science, especially with food, are trying to solve war hunger. They're trying to feed more people. They're creating disease resistant foods. And they talked about a square watermelon because it's easier to store. But then some of the potentially harmful effects are we can have harmful side effects and potentially harmful to your wallet. Um, these watermelons could be expensive. Then on the study blast, we read about fertilizers. So this is how they're helpful, but how they're harmful. And then we went on to our read aloud. Now, before I move on to that, I wanted to talk to you. I put the spade strategy on the board again. And we also are dealing with homophones. So I wanted to make sure students understand the difference between genes and genes because we are talking about genetically modified foods. So let me give you a glimpse on what we ended up reading today. First and foremost, I did the read aloud. This is all about organics. So I went ahead and read this and did the teacher think alouds so that the students can get introduced to organic foods. We even went over the Greek root organ, which means natural since we are working with Greek roots this week. And then we read food fight. So this is talking about genetically modified foods and uh, learning about what superfoods are and some of the safety issues since we're working with argumentative text. And then, of course, we answered the fine text evidence questions and made annotations in our text. That then led us to our writing activity. So we were reading Source 1, The Civil Rights Pioneers. And then we also read Source 2, The Tallahassee Bus Boycott. I do realize I didn't get to this source with my morning group, which is my block two today. So then that brought us to the booklet that I showed you yesterday. So we started by analyzing the prompt. And then before going into our buckets on the inside, which are right here, we went ahead and started catching our notes. So we caught the notes for source one and two, and tomorrow we'll make sure we finish catching notes for all the sources so that we can then sort those notes into the buckets, which will create two body paragraphs. As you can see, they're gonna sort the evidence that goes together, they're gonna give it a reason for each bucket, and then they're going to take that and create a topic sentence, which they're going to use on the back so they can start writing those two body paragraphs. So hopefully this is gonna be a great springboard for their eventual essay that they're going to write on another sheet of paper. So that is what we ended up doing today, Tuesday, 
And right now, before I leave, I want to finish my activity for tomorrow. I did mention that I was going to do a reading escape room, but because we're doing like a reading on the bay, I decided to rename it into a reading treasure hunt since I was able to get some sea glass delivered. And tomorrow, as soon as they finish answering the little clues that they need to find in the envelopes and find the treasure through the reading activities that they're going to do, they can get one piece of sea glass to take with them as a little token. So I thought of another activity to do, and I'm thinking maybe I should do a third one just in case, but we'll see. Um, if we run out of time, I can just do it together with them. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the second clue activity, and then I'll show you what I end up creating. Update time. So I was able to finish the puzzle pieces, but my room is freezing cold and I cannot stay here any longer. I'm wearing a sweater, my hands are freezing. I'm starting to have muscle spasms in my torso from how cold it is in here. So I don't wanna suffer anymore. So I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna try to think of a third clue to include along with maybe a little scoring sheet so that they have it and they can keep track of each clue. So that is it for today. I'm gonna to grab my things and go where it's warm, probably my car and I will see you tomorrow. But before I do, let me show you the slides that I created for those puzzle pieces. So this is a sheet from Clue 1, which basically has the definitions for these words. And these are the puzzle pieces outlined where they will put them. But these are the puzzle pieces themselves that I will cut out and laminate so that students can place them on top of this. And it'll reveal the secret word, which is beauty, a rare beauty. So that is what they will fill out on their little recording sheet. That's all for now. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday morning. I am coming to you in the morning because I want to share a real teacher moment. So last week, it completely slipped my mind to let the students know about today's idiom parade. So yeah, I sent a dojo message yesterday to the parents letting them know about it and telling them that it's okay if your child can participate and if they can't it's fine because what i'm going to do this morning is i'm actually going to have the students design hats with pictures that represent an idiom i'm going to make little idiom poster cards so they can hold it while they're doing the parade so they can show what their idiom is yeah real teacher moment here completely slipped my mind with a million things that we were doing and here i was leaving last friday feeling so accomplished when in fact I had this looming over my head and I didn't even know it. So on another note, I did finish my last clue activity for the reading treasure hunt that I'm doing tonight for literacy night. This is going to be a very long day. I am here. It's 810. I'm not going to leave school to 730 tonight because literacy night starts from 530 all the way to 730. So it's gonna be a long day. At least the treasure hunt, they're gonna do it in groups. So I don't have to print a lot of things, but I do have to print things, I have to cut things, I have to put things in envelopes. I did get the sea glass delivered, and I'm gonna put it inside of one of my Harry Potter boxes that I have in my classroom library. Make it pretend that it's a treasure chest. This is the box right here, so I thought it would be perfect for it. So I'm gonna just put all of the sea glass in here, and once the student groups complete their treasure hunt, they will get one small piece of sea glass. The sea glass that I got from Amazon comes in white, light blue, blue, and green. Let me show you. So here it is. I'm just gonna put it in that bin. And yeah, four separate bags, one cup each, I believe. So that's the sea glass. And these are the envelopes that I purchased so that I can use different color envelopes for each group as they complete their reading treasure hunt. So that's my little morning update for today, Wednesday, January 25th. I'll let you know later on how my day progresses. I'll probably check in with you a couple times today.
Hello friends, I know I said I was gonna check in with you a couple of times, but it didn't happen. So right now we're at the end of the day on Thursday, January 26th. Yesterday, after I checked in with you in the morning, it was a very long day. I was trying to make sure my students did some idiom, you know, representations, and then we did participate in the parade just with my homeroom. My afternoon group, I had them in the afternoon, so I still had them do the idioms activity. They didn't get to do the parade, but they still got to be able to participate in the idioms activity and create some interpretations of the literal meaning of the idioms. So they had a lot of fun. And today, Thursday, we had a guest reader come in and read the giving tree to the students. I was able to use novel effect and have the soundscape as she read the book to them. Beautiful story, she asked them about it and they were able, a lot of them were able to grasp the message of the story. So then after she was gone, I read them the story, not quite narwhal. Let me show you the cover. This is a story, super, super cute. And I also had a novel effect so that they had a soundscape as I read the story. And today's behavior was a little bit different. And I know that it's because we haven't really been on our regular routine since this literacy week and we've had different activities. Also, my co-teacher wasn't here today. She won't be here tomorrow. So I know that kind of makes them feel like it's not a regular day and our schedule was a little different. It's gonna continue tomorrow since tomorrow we're going to see an in-school opera of Hansel and Gretel in the morning. And then they're gonna bring blankets and towels to sit outside in the garden and read a book. So that's for the morning and the afternoon. I will do something similar with the afternoon class and that'll be our week. But my week is not over because on Saturday I have a teacher conference to attend to. But I wanted to let you know how the reading treasure hunt turned out for yesterday night during literacy night. It went fantastically well, but before I tell you a little bit more about it, let me show you how we set up the baskets for each group. So my tables, they look a little bit different now because I rearranged my desk at the end of the day today, Thursday, but yesterday I did put them in cluster groups so that students and their parents when they came in will be able to work on the reading treasure hunt together. So I put all the materials of the reading treasure hunt in these baskets that I already have in my classroom and they're color coded because that's how I like to do it. And in the baskets, they had some little pencils that they can use and a baggie. And in the baggie, let me just take out the content so I can show you a little bit clearer. So in the bag, they had a couple copies of the article they had a reading treasure hunt code collection sheet, which goes to the back. So in the front, they had clue one and clue two. And then on the back, they had clue three. And I do want to say, I had my, my previous fourth graders who are now fifth graders. They came in and they pretty much went through this treasure hunt really quickly because we'd done something similar last school year. But I got feedback from them. Like I have them put the code here and then use it to complete the sentence. In the, I'm gonna be revising this for future use. I'm gonna get rid of this and just have the sentence so that they can write the code one time and not two times as it is shown here. But that's a little reflection for that. They also had a little map that I created which goes along with each clue. So they had the sandy shores, the mighty mountains, and the cozy camp, and then they will find the treasure. So the activity was separated into three clues. So let me open up clue one. So in clue one, they would take out the paper along with the cards and let me just put it down. And then what they needed to do was match vocabulary words from the article with their definition. So if I have um, right here a piece of broken object, especially a fragment or pottery or glass, that would be shards. So hold on, let me make this a little bit more flat. In retrospect, I think using a letter manila envelope would be good, but. So shards will go here, and then the process of stirring something up or forcing it up, that's agitation, the feel or look of a surface, that's texture, broken bits of glass objects that over time tumble and drift through the waters of the ocean until they wash ashore, that's sea glass, abundant is a large amount or a number, and the only one of its type, that will be unique. Now. When they put all the cards on this sheet, they reveal a number code, which is 1960, which helps them complete. So sea glass has been found on beaches around the world since the mid-1960s. 
So that's a little fun fact. So that was envelope for clue one. Then we move on to clue two. And for this one, they have some puzzle pieces and a game board or an activity board. And on this activity board, I did number one, two, and three for a purpose so that things can go into the order that I need them. So they're basically matching the cause with its effects. So one, I'm going to put it here. So the cause goes on, sorry, it goes here. Like looking at the paper instead of looking what I'm filming. Um, then two and three. So then what they did is they then looked at the effect pieces that they had and matched it to the cause. So let's see. So we have this one. Make the sharp edges of the glass smooth and rounder. So when broken bits of glass tumble and see, um, actually it's the salt and agitation of the ocean water. So that's what makes it smoother. So that matches together. And then you may find sea glass and that would be the top one. If you walk along the beach and look down, you may find sea glass. So that matches together there. And then when broken bits of glass tumble and drift in the ocean, sea glass is made. So then for this one, once they placed all the cause and effect relationships together, they needed to get the letter at the bottom left of each piece. So B, E, A, U, T, Y, and that would be sea glass is a rare beauty. So then we move to clue number three, and let me show you how that is. So clue number three is this one, and this one uses a word maze along with some questions and similes and metaphors. So the way this works is basically this is a dichotomous key and the dichotomous key lets them know whatever their answer is, that's how many spaces or how they're gonna move in the letter maze. So for example, a piece of sea glass is like a snowflake. Well, that is a simile. So from the start, you're gonna move down five spaces and circle the letter that you land on. We don't count the stars. So one, two, three, four, five circle that so for each answer that they have they will be told which direction to move from the previous part so basically when they finish they will end up over here and they would have spelled sea glass so right here the sea glass treasure is now yours and then i told them congratulations and brought them over to this chest which contained a whole bunch of sea glass now this is the sea glass that's left over from the one that i showed you in the last clip but basically families came to the classroom they sat down at different groups and they worked together to solve each clue and i had three different rotations and i had one other fourth grade teacher here with me helping out with the activity the thing i have to say is that this was very much also teaching because we were reviewing different concepts in the classroom like the little cause and effect puzzle pieces the definitions of the vocabulary words and using context clues to find out from the passage what that word possibly meant and also helping the students remember what similes and metaphors are so we were on our feet the entire time we had three rotations and each rotation lasted 20 minutes but i have to say the parents and the students loved it and they really had a great time for literacy night we were one of different sessions i know for our students they had a little boarding pass and the boarding pass told them their schedule as to which session they had to go so some of them will go to the library first some of them will go here first uh, other students will go to the fifth grade table where they were doing minute to win it reading games and that was a lot of fun that the fifth grade grade level chair did along with his team and it was great. So that is my whole experience with creating this reading treasure hunt which is pretty much like an escape room. I just decided to call it a treasure hunt since we had the whole bay and ocean theme, which is why I chose the passage on sea glass, which again comes from Jen Jones. And I'll link that resource in the description box below because she has five different articles that she wrote herself on different text structures and they are leveled in three or four different levels. So really great resource. So it is there in the description box if you're interested. The rest of the activities were created by me. All right, I'm very tired. It's been a very long two days. Yesterday, Wednesday, after I left here, like around 7.40, I went home and I didn't realize how much I had done until I tried to get out of the car and my whole body hurt. But today was also a very long day. I'm very tired. Hopefully with this new seating setup, I will see maybe a difference in behavior and focus. We'll see. 
But again, tomorrow's gonna be another day that we're gonna be off our regular routine. But just to give you a glimpse, this is how the new setup is. And I did put the chairs up to help the custodians so they have an easier time cleaning the floors. So we'll see how it is tomorrow. That is all that I have to share for Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow, Friday. Hello everyone, it is the end of the day on Friday. We have officially finished week 21, I believe. And it was actually a pretty good day. This morning, our students started by going to the cafeteria for an in-house opera of Hansel and Gretel. Yesterday, I did spend some time to let them know what an opera was and to also read the opera booklet that they sent us for the activity today and they watched it and they absolutely loved it. One of their favorite characters was the witch because she was amazing and so cool and had amazing voice, just like Hansel and Gretel as well. But that was one of their favorite characters. And then after that, we came up to the classroom for a little bit of review. Then they grabbed their towels and blankets and they went outside and we had a reading on the reef. Uh, basically, we were just laying down our blankets and our towels on the lawn by the gardens of our school and reading a book. So that was very nice. Today has been like a little oh, cloudy day, but a cold front is coming through, so it's kind of cool. And then after that, they went to lunch. Now, during lunch, I did get the students that have been behaving pretty well this week, and I brought them back to the classroom so we can have lunch bunch, and I gave them some goldfish snacks, a fruit snack and a granola, a chewy granola bar, the mini ones. So I gave them that as a special treat. And then I had my afternoon class. For my afternoon class, we started working on a reading assignment where they were reading the anchor text, A New Kind of Corn, and doing a T-chart in a group to show how the corn, the BT corn, was helpful and how it was harmful. BT corn is GMO corn because it has been genetically modified. And these are the anchor charts that they were working on, which they'll finish next week. So I started by showing them some examples of a way that it's helpful and harmful from the text. So all of them had that first one, but then they went back into the text and they made sure to add more so that they can explain how the BT corn was helpful and how it was harmful. And this is another group. So that's basically what we ended up doing today. And I also showed them the vocabulary Weekend Wrap. So we were discussing the current event news for the week. And then they went to specials. And after specials, they continued working on this. And then, of course, we had indoor recess. This class actually earned it, so they were playing some Minecraft. And that is pretty much the end of the week. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.